throw leads us to Alan Hans Nick's fix. He's in the Squarespace studio. Al Troutwick back on the Chase Bridge. Some very simple questions tonight, Alan. What is Rashid Wallace doing? He's hanging out with the Knicks this week. He was at practice yesterday, and it was great to see the former Nick. He did spend one season here with the Knicks, and he also knows Scott Perry very well, and Scott Perry reached out to him and asked him to come and work with some of the bigs. So that's what he did at yesterday's practice, and one in particular was rookie Mitchell Robinson that he spent a lot of time with, and he also worked with him just before the game. Uh, on his on his game and that's what he's trying to help him with is acclimate to the NBA so I ran into Sheed in, in the hallway and I just asked him what do you think of Mitchell Robinson first and foremost he's known him for a couple of years in fact he played with uh, Mitchell Robinson's godfather Shimon Williams at UNC small world he said but when it comes to Mitchell Robinson he said real positive upside Mitch is really talented athletic as hell he had a lot to learn because he hasn't played basketball in a while especially competitive basketball on this level so he said you have to give him a curve but once he gets the hang of this game he and knows the ins and outs of the NBA he said he's going to be just fine and when I talked to him also about how he's been very vocal he was very vocal yesterday at practice even in that workout there you can hear him from across the garden and he said that's just natural <laughs> it's just natural for me to be loud and try to help the young guys now he is not just the only uh, pro that is going to come in here, a, a legend type of player who's going to come in here and work with the Knicks. In fact, David Fisdale, as you know, has already reached out to Patrick Ewing, who talked to the team before the preseason game in Washington. We all know Walt Clyde Frazier is somebody that's been more than welcome to talk with the players and give his insight. And we might even see Chauncey Billups around here in the future as well. And she told me that, you know, if they want to bring me back, I'll certainly come back and help. He has an interest in this team and he wants to see it succeed. What's on Chris Depp's Porzingis' mind these days? Well, as you know, it's been tough to watch some of these games. This young team battling it out with some teams and just can't finish some games. And it's hard to not think that if Chris Depp's Porzingis was out there, would some of these results be different? Well, Chris Depp certainly is thinking that as well, and you can't blame him as he's sitting on the bench. So after Friday's loss to the Warriors, where the Knicks went three quarters, Chris Depp's put up a very interesting post on Instagram. I just want to hoop. Now, Al, take a look at that picture. We all know what that moment was. That was just before he dunked on Giannis Antetokounmpo. And then when he landed, the ACL was injured. And since then, he has not played. Now, again, he's about eight months out since the injury and slowly working his way back to get into the lineup. It's still no timetable. But clearly, KP's watching the Knicks play and thinking to himself, man, I wish I could be out there with my teammates. Now rehab can be lonely. Tyron Lue fired after six games, all losses. Your thoughts? It is pretty incredible to think you go from NBA Finals and three in a row to a slow start and you're out. But this is also an NBA where last year's coach of the year, Dwayne Casey, was fired and he's at another place now so anything happens in the coaching carousel but it is something that you kind of can understand what Cavaliers are going through right now as LeBron James left and their motivation has certainly changed to maybe developing young players in fact reports say that management wanted Ty Lue to start playing more of the younger players and that's why they had a difference in opinion now LeBron James did put up a tweet for his former coach and there's an interesting wording here. So thanks for the memories, more importantly, our partnership in bringing a championship to that deserved city fan base. You know how to find me. Thought it was an interesting choice of words by LeBron there, Al. Interesting how? Well, partnership, usually a player plays for the coach, not necessarily works with the coach to win a title. That sounds like they made a deal to compete and win. And that, well, that is also, though, that has been the knock on Ty Lue in Cleveland, is that he really wasn't in charge and now, of course, they're going to find a coach who's going to be in charge of trying to rebuild that franchise. Time for the stat of the night. Well, it has to do with Ty Lue because six games, you think, that's incredible. Just six games? How short of a tenure has there been for a coach in the NBA? It's top five, but it certainly isn't number one. Remember, even last season, Earl Watson was fired after three games. And there was also, let's see, there's Paul Westfall who was out after seven games a couple of years after, before that. And then Mike Brown, five games with the Lakers in 2012. But in first place, and this probably will never be top, back in 1971, legend Dolph Shays was fired one game into the season for the old Buffalo Braves. They lost that game by 35 at home. You can understand why.